Hi, I'm Jordan from Kettner Creative. In this video, I'm going to compare the Yamaha AG06 audio mixer against the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 audio interface. These are often compared to each other when people are looking for a home audio interface or audio mixer, a way to plug in their XLR microphone to their computer. So we put this video together to make our recommendations on which of these units we would use for which purpose, if at all. If you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, we do have current up-to-date pricing linked down in the description below. You can find current pricing from a variety of online retailers to make sure that you find the best price. So please check those links out. I do think that they will help you. Now for the purposes of this video, we're going to start with the specs, comparing the specs to each, and then we're going to talk about which I recommend for home recording, live streaming, or live events. So first of all, both of these units do have 48 volts of phantom power, but the Yamaha AG06 only has it on one of the microphone inputs. So if you're wanting two condenser microphones, you have to go with the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. But if you only need one condenser microphone amongst all the other input options, then the Yamaha AG06 will work for you. In terms of USB connectivity, both the Yamaha AG06 and the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 have 24-bit and 192 kilohertz USB output to and from the computer. So you have super high quality, that is the standard, but both of them do compare for USB specs. Now in terms of gain and the preamps that come with each device, the Yamaha AG06 doesn't publish the gain that's available with the XLR microphone input, but with my prior no knowledge of other Yamaha products, I would say it's easily between 60 and 64 dB. My assumption and my feel when using this audio interface is that it's very comparable to the Yamaha MG series. And in that case, just looking here with the RE20, I'm getting a good level out of this microphone and it's at eight out of 10, which tells me that this probably has the same preamp as the Yamaha MG10. So it's around 64 dB of gain. Now with that 64 dB of gain, you have an EIN or a noise rating of minus 128. The Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 has 56 decibels of gain, and in terms of a noise rating, it has minus 128 as well. So the Yamaha AG06 does have more gain with the same amount of noise, so it does have better preamps built into it. Uh, but again, I just do want to say that you can only plug one condenser microphone in because of the 48 volt limitation with this audio mixer. Now in terms of powering both of these units, they're both USB bus powered, which is good. On the back of the Yamaha, it's a USB type B and on the back of the Focusrite, it's a USB type C. Now one feature that the Yamaha AG06 has that beats the Focusrite Scarlett is it has a second power input. Now if both of these devices are powered by USB, why do you need a second input? It's because not all devices can power these units. A good example of this is when you're recording with an iPad. You, an iPad will not power either one of these devices through the USB cable. So with the Yamaha's second USB input, you can use a USB battery bank or something like that to power this audio mixer so you can record on your iPad. That's a super cool feature that comes with this. It really shows that Yamaha knows who this is for. It's for that portable, everyday singer songwriter musician that needs a lot of functionality and they did build that into this product as well. Now in terms of EQ and effects on both devices, the Yamaha AG06 does have built-in compression and reverb effects. On the other channel, it has a built-in amp simulator. So if you're playing an electric guitar straight into this, you can run distortion in a way that is similar to a guitar amp. It's not the best amp simulator, but it is there to get you going if you don't have any other software-based solutions. The Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 is pretty straightforward. It's relying on whatever software you're using for a lot of these effects and compression, but it does have a built-in air mode which provides an upper frequency boost that a lot of people like. Uh, so that's a nice feature that comes with the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 that doesn't come with the Yamaha AG06. Now I'm going to walk through both devices and the physical features and layouts of either device. So the Yamaha AG06 here, like I mentioned before, there are two 
microphone combi jack inputs. What this means is that you can plug in an XLR cable or a quarter inch cable. In the first input, you can connect a dynamic microphone or a condenser microphone because it has that 48 volts of phantom power, or you could do a line level input, something like a piano or something like that, and you have that ability to add a 26 decibel pad to that channel if it is coming in too hot. Now you have the ability to set the gain, you can add compression and EQ, there is some built in by default, but this really is meant to connect to the Yamaha app where you can tweak it a little bit further. And then it has reverb and effects as well, plus a level knob, and then it gets mixed all the way through the device. The second input here doesn't have 48 volts of phantom power, so you can do a dynamic microphone, not a condenser microphone, or you can do a line level input like the other device, and you can use the 26 decibel pad for that, or you can plug an electric guitar or electric bass guitar into this, and then there's a high Z input button here. They call it a guitar button, but that does the same thing. It lowers the impedance into a more appropriate range for the preamps that are built into this device. As mentioned before, there is an amp simulator just on the second channel for that guitar input, and you have an effect as well where you can add reverb or delays or something like that. Now, with those two XLR combi jack inputs, you also get a bunch of line level inputs. You get a dual quarter inch line level input, so left and right, and same for RCA. If you aren't using an XLR microphone, you have the ability to override that first channel with a headset input. That's really cool as well. And then here you have some USB functionality for this. So if you're multi-track recording, this will just send the first two channels if it's in dry channel one, two to your audio software to record, or you can record the mix of the whole device. You can't multi-track each channel for the whole device. You can either multi-track the first two channels, or you can record the whole device as a single stereo mix. And then there's a loopback feature here as well, where you can send stuff from the computer back through the mixer for your whole mix, and then you can send that mix to your software again to be recorded, so that's really cool as well. You also get an aux input here, for if you're plugging in an iPhone or Android phone or something like that as well. For outputs, you do have stereo outputs. If you're running a PA system, you have monitor outputs and a headphone input. You can use the quarter inch jack here or the eighth inch jack. So that's, pretty, uh, that's a pretty quick run through of the audio mixer here. Basically has a lot of functionality, but for the microphones, you can kind of just plug in one condenser microphone. So that's one note there. Now on the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, you have two combi jack inputs again where you can plug in XLR mic level, quarter inch line level, or quarter inch instrument level into either one of the jacks. Both jacks are identical. If you're using an instrument level input, there's this instrument button here that you can use to just lower the impedance of that to be more appropriate for the input there. You can set your gain. Here's that air mode I was speaking about earlier that gives you an upper frequency boost. For direct monitoring here, you can choose to monitor both channels in both ears of your headphone, or you can separate them. So if you're miking a stereo piano and you want to hear both inputs separately, you can do that. That basically auto pans it for you as well. On the back of the device, there's just two left and right quarter inch inputs there for your quarter inch powered monitors for your desk. Okay, so which of these devices do I recommend across a variety of situations? So first, let's talk about home recording. For home recording, I recommend the AG06 over the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. A couple of reasons why. The, uh, the inputs here have more gain at the same noise, so there's no sacrifice in quality. You just get more power to power difficult-to-power microphones like the RE20 or the SM7B that notoriously require a lot of gain. You can power that directly with this audio mixer without any external inline preamp like a cloud lifter or anything like that. You get a lot more control. You can set the gain and the level independently. You can add compression or EQ on the mixer if you wish, or you can do it in your audio audio software. You get a whole bunch of USB connectivity options, whether you're recording the whole mix, if you're a singer-songwriter, or if you just want to record channels one and two independently. There's a whole bunch more functionality here without any real downside compared to the Focusrite Scarlett. Unless you really like the Focusrite Scarlett's air mode and how that sounds, 
or if you need a device that can power two condenser microphones. In those two cases, maybe the Focusrite Scarlett would be better for you, but overall I think the Yamaha AG06 is a better buy for home recording. Now for home streaming or audio streaming, I think the Yamaha AG06 is better value compared to the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. With the first input, if you're home streaming, you are generally only using one microphone anyway, so you don't need that phantom power of both channels. Plus, this gives you the option to add effects, compression, EQ. When I'm doing audio streaming of any type, I love tactile buttons close to me so I can quickly make changes that I want to make. This has just way more control, plus it has more inputs. You can use one of the stereo inputs here for a soundboard if you have a bunch of audio files that you want to insert into your live stream. You have a lot more control over all the inputs. You can do the USB loopback, which is a really cool way to maybe grab audio from a YouTube page, run it through the audio mixer, and kick it back out to OBS all in one USB cable. For, to manage your live stream with another input coming from your computer. That's really cool. The Focusrite Scarlett doesn't have anything like that. It basically just has two inputs that you can connect to your live stream. So I think the Yamaha AG06 wins for this. Now for live events, I think this is quite obvious, but again, the Yamaha AG06 is better suited. It does have stereo outputs here that are balanced. They can go quarter inch balance cable to XLR to have set of powered speakers for a live event. If you're a singer songwriter, if you're just managing like a small wedding or a small corporate event or something like that, you could do it with this mixer, but you can't do it with the Focusrite Scarlett 2A2. That's not what this device is made to do. This device, the Focusrite Scarlett 2A2, is just built to accept two inputs to get to your audio software. That's what this is designed to do, where the Yamaha AG06 is a lot more flexible. So to sum it all up, I think it's pretty clear here. I think the Yamaha AG06 is a much more flexible device. Again, it really does depend on your budget. The only reason that I can see to get the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 over the Yamaha AG06 is if you don't have the desk space for it or if you do need two channels that are both condenser microphones. In both those cases, I'd say get the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. But if you're getting into home studio recording, live streaming, and if people learn that you are into audio, they might start inviting you out to run sound for their events. The Yamaha AG06 will be able to do a lot of those a lot better. It really is like a Swiss Army knife of audio interfaces where it can do a little bit of everything, and it, it really is a nice compact design that's full of features. It sounds great, but again, the big downside here is that there is only room for one condenser microphone on this audio mixer. But if you're using dynamic microphones, you can use both inputs there for that. Again, if you are looking for current pricing on either one of these devices, we do have some links down in the description below. So check those out if you're looking for current up-to-date pricing. If you have any questions about either one of these devices that we didn't cover and you have a question that you were hoping got answered, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. We do read all the comments and we respond to as many as we can. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.